In recent years, you'll have noticed these funkier and better looking card machines hanging around in coffee shops and market stands, which look like this, this, or this. In industry lingo, these are collectively known as payment facilitators or payfax. They include brands like iZettle, SumUp, and Square, which was founded by one of the Twitter founders, Jack Dorsey. And they're different from traditional processors like WorldPay. While there are only a handful of Payfax, there are thousands of traditional processors like Anecto or Vantiv, and big banks will usually have a processing division like Barclay Card. So how are they different? And when is it better to choose a traditional processor or a Payfax? Payfax aren't really banks, they're technology companies, and they were looking for a way to do payments a bit differently. So they went to the drawing board. What don't merchants like about traditional processors? First, contracts. Payfax eliminated the contract. With it, they eliminated terminal rental fees, minimum processing fees, and some of the credit and identity checks which traditional processors rely on when you set up an account. In return, they needed a way to lower risk for themselves. So you have to buy your card reader, although this actually works out cheaper. And instead of sending you bills, they simply withhold their fee from what you receive in your business bank account. So instead of receiving 100% of what you charge the customer and a bill, you receive 98%. Second, they targeted complex rates. Now pay attention here because this is where it matters in terms of your price. There's three types of billing. The most comprehensive style of rate, which we'd associate with traditional processors, is called interchange plus plus. The interchange is the fee levied by your customer's bank. These rates are public and they are published on Visa and MasterCard's website. And you can find a link to the page in the description. The first plus refers to the fee which is levied by Visa and MasterCard and the final plus refers to the fees which are levied by your processor with whom you've signed the contract. That means that any differences in fees are accounted for here. This style of rate is totally transparent, but they're super complex. You have a discrete fee for every permutation of card, from MasterCard credit to Visa business debit to foreign cards to high reward cards. So it gets simplified. The second way quotes get expressed is in a blended format. That's basically the same as Interchange Plus, but a lot of the details are missing. A blended quote might be three lines in an email, which might say business cards X, foreign cards Y, debit cards Z. That's easier to understand, but it might omit important details, and we'd recommend always reading the contract carefully before you sign it. In some cases, they've simplified out fees they might want to slip past you. Payfax thought that this was a mess and they came up with a third way. Payfax offer a flat percentage fee for every card, regardless of what the type of card is. And sometimes they'll make money on the card and sometimes they'll lose money. But either way, that's the rate. So how does that affect your price? Well, which is cheapest depends on three factors. The first, which you will have already thought of, is your size, by which I mean how much you process on card. Now, both traditional processors and payment facilitators offer cheaper rates the more you process. That said, traditional processors offer rates which are kind of mean to people processing very little by card. If you expect to process less than £4,000 per month, then going through a payfax is likely to work out a bit cheaper. The second and the most important factor is your average transaction size. Flat rates are expressed as a flat percent, like 1.7%. Interchange or blended rates tend to be in a percentage plus format, such as 1.5% plus 5p. This makes your average transaction size really important. Let's say I have a low average transaction size, like three pounds, because I sell coffee. At 1.7%, that means I'd pay around five pence for that transaction. With the second rate, I would pay 9.5 pence, nearly twice as expensive. Now let's say I have a boutique fashion shop. So my average spend is about 50 pounds. In these circumstances, 1.7% is the more expensive rate. The third 
And final factor is your card makeup. The basic way to understand that is, the more exotic the card, the more a traditional process would charge, and the better off you are with going with a payfac. A standard UK debit would be very cheap, a high reward foreign business card is very expensive. So if you're opening in the luxury lounge of an airport, watch out for traditional processes. Those additional fees will rack up. But with a payfac, that rate will be consistent, whether someone's from Ukraine, Bogota, or the island nation of Nauru. Those three factors can muddle in complex ways, and if you're not sure which would be the best for you, feel free to give us a call. In the description, we've produced a guide to payment processing, which includes the fuller details of how payment processing works and extra information like what is an ISO or what a payment application is. We also include practical advice, such as how to run a bidding process for traditional acquirers, examples of what a misleading quote looks like, and what to do about integrating your payments with your point of sale system. We're a company called Storekit, and we're a marketplace for software and payment solutions. So we partner with all the payment facilitators and a number of the traditional processing organizations. If you're not sure which would be the best style of rate for you, or you want advice on the best rates you could get at your volumes, give us a call. We have lots of different options available and a referral from Storekit will not affect your price.